Day two of an Irish election is about fighting for what's left over. Across Ireland, the second, third, fourth preferences and beyond of voters were redistributed, dragging parties which once weighed their votes over the line. I mean, they're still counting it. They're still counting it. And we're try desperately trying to find anyone from Sinn Féin, the victors, but they're not here. They're not here because they won so big yesterday, they don't need to be here on day two. This is just the crumbs. All of this is just the crumbs. When I was here last week, no one would have predicted this. Sinn Féin has won more votes than anybody else, more seats than at any time for a century, and broken a duopoly between the centrist Fianna Foyle and Fianna Gael, which has more or less sustained Irish politics for decades. For the first time ever, a party of the left has come out on top. It's left the Irish electoral landscape completely fragmented. For a majority, you need 80 or so TDs or MPs in the Doyle. Not all accounting is done yet, but these are the latest projections. Fianna Foyle on 39 seats, Sinn Féin on 37, Fianna Gael on 36, the Greens on 12, with the more minor parties making up the rest. So where does that leave us? Even a Fianna Foyle and Fianna Gael coalition doesn't get you to 80. You need a third party. Given this election was seen as a rejection of both, that might be hard to come by. Fianna Gael and Sinn Féin doesn't work either and is ideologically unthinkable for Fianna Gael, so it isn't going to happen. The talk in Dublin tonight is of a Fianna Foyle, Sinn Féin, Green government, but it would be a huge retreat for Fianna Foyle and their leader who had promised he would never work with Sinn Féin. <laughs> Suddenly though, Michal Martin, Fianna Foyle's leader, and his new MPs have changed their tune. Obviously your leader has been very, very clear, stood on the election saying wouldn't go into government with Sinn Féin. Do you think he should stick to that? As I said, today is not the day to rule in or out anything. Today is the day to reflect on each of our mandates. Our system is beautiful because you get to see uh, exactly where your votes come from oh, and exactly the, basis, the types of people that you get On the basis of where your from. votes have come from, would well, you feel comfortable? I, I don't think any of us know that at this point. Let's say Sinn Féin get into government, either as the main party or the secondary party, whatever, but they're in government. How, what effect do you think that will have on A, the Brexit process and B, the peace process in Northern Ireland and Anglo-Irish relations more generally. In relation to Brexit, and we made this point throughout the referendum, that changing government at this crucial time, ahead of the European Council meeting in March when we decide the European negotiating position, it's extremely risky. When you see a TD like Desi Ellis walking into the Cain Centre yesterday as people sing IRA rebel, rebel songs, you do have to question how serious they are about bringing the island forward together. There it is. New centre of Irish political power. Now, Sinn Féin's leader, Mary Lou Macdonald, is in a pre-eminent position and she has to start to address those very questions. Former teacher Bertie O'Hearn, speaking to the BBC a couple of hours ago, uh, saying that he thinks that the result of this election means that a border poll is more likely in the north. Isn't that right? I think in any event we're, we're heading towards a, a border poll, a referendum on unity. I, th I think that's just the direction of travel. And Partly I think, because of this election result? Well, it, certainly this adds to it, but I think even aside from the election, uh, you have Brexit, you have changing demographics, you have the fact that the unionist majority has been lost in the north over the last number of elections. So that is the direction of travel. And, you know, anybody who is in touch with the the dynamic of politics on this island knows that. And it's, it's very irresponsible, you know, of politicians of any stripe to bury their heads in the sand on that score. I, I was saying to the outgoing Taoiseach and government, you need to start the preparations. Uh, whoever now makes up the next government, those preparations need to start. And could I also say, uh, those on the island of Britain and in London in particular need to start preparing because constitutional preparing for change, a border poll. Yes, constitutional change is coming. But if you're Taoiseach, how will your Brexit policy be different from that of uh, Leo Varadkar or Michal Martin? What will you be asking the EU for that they haven't asked for? Certainly we will be making asks of the European system in terms of long-term Irish interests and on the issue of partition. I mean, I think, like the European, I think the European Union needs to take a stand in respect of Ireland in the same way that it supported the reunification of Germany, in the same way that it has a position on Cyprus, for example, and a positive um, approach to the reunification of, of that country. And you'll be asking I th for that I think Ireland is no different. Yes, I think it would be correct for our allies, for our friends, for anybody who cares about this country and our people. It is plain to see that partition and division has been a disaster. There will be people, there are people in Britain at the moment who see Sinn Féin and they associate it with the IRA who are very disturbed by this result. 
affected. What can you say to assuage their fears? I would say that people should take heart from the fact that the conflict is over, that we now have a peaceful, stable dispensation on this island. I think it needs to be said also that there are so many people who live on the island of Britain, but in England in particular, who are great supporters and friends of Ireland and of Irish unity. Don't expect to see instant changes. For a start, the process of forming a government in Dublin could take weeks, if not months. There could be another election. But whatever the outcome, the old familiar axes of Irish politics have disappeared. Make no mistake, having Sinn Féin so dominant across Ireland as a permanent fixture of Irish politics in the North and South will and must affect the power dynamics across these islands. The post-Brexit politics of the Union and the Anglo-Irish relationship were always destined to be fraught. They just became more complicated still.